I think Lennox Lewis is the best heavyweight ever, and I think he is simply put the baddest man of all time. So I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time, but I wanted to really dive deep into the question of who is the baddest man ever. So the title of the baddest man on the planet has always been traditionally reserved for the best heavyweight boxer at that time. This basically meant you could beat any other man in the world in a fair fight. I think this term was first popularized by Mike Tyson when in the late 80s, early 90s, in his prime, he was absolutely steamrolling all of his opponents, and most people thought that he could beat any other man in a fair fight. And obviously we know that the baddest man on the planet today probably is the heavyweight champion of the UFC, but today I just wanted to look at the traditional sense of the baddest man on the planet and keep it to boxing. So with all that being said, if we take all of the heavyweight boxers in their prime from all the time periods up until today, which one of these boxers would come out on top? Or simply put, who is the baddest man ever? And why is it Lennox Lewis? So before I begin, let's set up some rules and let's preface this by saying, baddest does not equal the greatest. Baddest is more so who is the best. And this does not account for resume, impact, or any of the other aspects that accounts for greatness. How I would define greatness is not only how good you were within the ring, but how you impacted the sport outside the ring as well. In this video, we're only gonna look at the former. We are strictly only going to look at their skill, their style, and their attributes, or anything that can help their case for being the best heavyweight boxer and not the greatest. Another thing I wanted to mention is that this is based on who would win a theoretical best out of 10. This is the heavyweight division, so anything can happen, and anything has happened. I mean, look at Buster Douglas versus Mike Tyson, Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz. In the heavyweight division, all it takes is one punch. And on any given night, somebody who isn't supposed to win can land a huge shot on somebody who they're not necessarily better than. All of these matchups are based on a theoretical best out of 10. So that quickly eliminates the elephant in the room, which is Lennox Lewis's losses in his prime. The first one being to Oliver McCall when he was knocked out in the second round in an insane upset loss. And the second one being another knockout upset loss against Haseem Rahman. But in both cases, he was able to avenge those losses. In the case of Rahman, he was able to knock him out in the rematch, and in the case of Oliver McCall, he was able to make him cry. But seriously, Lennox Lewis is so bad that he was able to make Oliver McCall cry, break down, and eventually quit. Alright, enough talking, enough rules, let's get into the heavyweight boxers that I think are the baddest men on the planet. And because my pick is Lennox Lewis, let's go through the people that give him the toughest challenge, and while I think he can still win over those guys a majority of the time. So if we go chronologically, let's start with the classic heavyweights or the heavyweights before the 1970s. We have guys like Sonny Liston, Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis, Floyd Patterson, some of the greats. Now I'm only three minutes into the video, but I'm gonna start pissing off a lot of people, especially the old heads. And I'm gonna be quite honest with you, there is no way any of these guys can compete with Lennox Lewis. Like there is zero possibility that a 5'10 Rocky Marciano around 190 pounds can compete with a 6'5 damn near 260 pound skilled beast of a man in Lennox Lewis. There's no way. And the same kind of goes for Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis, and all of the other great heavyweights during this time. Now I wanted to quickly single out Sonny Liston because out of all of these guys, I think Sonny Liston would have given Lennox Lewis the toughest test. He was one of the biggest of these heavyweights and most certainly had the most power out of all of these heavyweights in my opinion and he was just insanely terrifying during his reign. But Lennox Lewis was not only just bigger than Sonny Liston but he was much more skilled and I think he would have found a way similar to how Muhammad Ali found a way in outboxing and staying on the outside of Sonny Liston. Look, as good and skilled as Sonny Liston was for his time, by the time we get to the 1990s where Lennox Lewis dominated, Lennox would have had a head start in terms of knowledge, ring IQ, and how to deal with a guy like Sonny Liston. And I think that 30 year gap where the sport evolved and the fighters just got better and better and better in terms of skill would have been too much. Now we get into the golden age of the heavyweight division with George Foreman, Joe Frazier, and of course, Muhammad Ali. Many people refer to these three as the best three in the golden age, and it's hard to deny that. So let's look at each one of these guys individually and see how they would match up against Lennox Lewis. Starting off with Joe Frazier, he famously was the first one to beat Muhammad Ali, and he was a great infighter, and he had a suffocating style because of his shorter frame. 
But when we match him up against Lennox Lewis, Lennox literally has every single physical advantage along with a very high fight IQ. So he would have utilized his superior reach to keep Frazier off of him and eventually used his superior power and size to probably take him out like George Foreman did. And speaking of George Foreman, I think Foreman, out of all of the boxers we've talked about so far, presents Lennox Lewis with one of his toughest fights. George Foreman is almost as big as Lennox Lewis and definitely has as much power and probably more power than Lennox does. I probably don't have to explain George Foreman to you, but he was an absolute tank with crushing power. And he's the first boxer we've encountered so far that can compete with Lennox Lewis's size. But I think Lennox Lewis would have Muhammad Ali'd him, which in other words means weather the storm of George Foreman's power early in the rounds and eventually tire him out and beat him down and take over the fight in the latter rounds. So again, if we bring back this theoretical best out of 10, I think a majority of them, maybe seven or eight, would end up with Lennox Lewis getting it through a late round KO or a decision. And finally, we have the great Muhammad Ali. And this by far, I think would have been Lennox Lewis's toughest test. I've said that multiple times, but Muhammad Ali is definitely Lennox Lewis's toughest fight. The biggest thing Muhammad Ali has when we match him up against Lennox Lewis is his superior movement, speed, and fight IQ. Man, watching Muhammad Ali is still amazing to me. His movement is just insane for a heavyweight of his size, and he could, again, move like a welterweight or a middleweight and had the speed and accuracy that could rival any heavyweight even today. But with all of that being said, I still do think Lennox Lewis can do it. Lennox Lewis was a very skilled boxer. Maybe not to the point of Muhammad Ali, but if you couple that with his size and his athleticism in general, I think the skill disparity is not enough for Muhammad Ali to make up for the physical advantages that Lennox Lewis has. Lennox Lewis is about two inches taller than Muhammad Ali, had a four inch reach advantage, and also most importantly was about 35 pounds heavier than Muhammad Ali. If we couple all of these physical advantages with Lennox Lewis's fight IQ, I think he finds a way to make up for the speed and the movement advantage that Muhammad Ali has. And in a theoretical best out of 10, I think six of them maybe go to Lennox Lewis through decision. Now we're on the 80s onward, and I wanted to quickly go over a batch of heavyweights that I think a lot of people may have as their baddest man ever, but Lennox Lewis had already beaten them convincingly, or in my opinion, I think would have easily beaten these guys. Starting off with Evander Holyfield, as great as he was, Lennox Lewis did in my opinion, convincingly won over him twice. In the first fight, he dominated but was robbed in a very controversial decision. And in the second fight, he also dominated Evander Holyfield and fortunately got the decision. Lennox Lewis gets a lot of flack for not fighting Riddick Bo, but he already beat him in the Olympics. And when Bo was champion, he actually relinquished the title to avoid defending against Lewis. Vladimir Klitschko is a heavyweight that dominated through the 2000s, but in my opinion, was pretty overrated. I'm gonna make a video about Vladimir Klitschko in the future, but I'm a pretty big Klitschko hater, and I think Lennox Lewis would have smashed him. I think his skill set was so limited, and he was basically given one of the easiest eras to dominate, and if he were to fight a guy like Lennox Lewis, he would be crushed. Now I saved the best two for last. I think this is the juiciest part of this video. And the first being a potential matchup with Mike Tyson where they're both in their primes. Now the two have fought before and Lennox Lewis did come out the winner, but this was in 2002 when they were both way past their prime. But I think even when they're both in their prime, Lennox Lewis still gets it done. Lennox Lewis obviously has the big height, reach, and size advantage. This may not be saying much considering that Mike Tyson has routinely fought guys bigger and with a longer reach, but he's never fought somebody like Lennox Lewis who has the significant size advantage, but also the fight IQ to couple with that. I think the way Mike Tyson lost in his prime years, so against Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield, for example, is stylistically Lennox Lewis's strengths. In both those losses, you had guys that were big enough to take on Mike Tyson's power and explosiveness and were able to weather the storm and basically tire him out until they could knock him out with a barrage of punches in the later rounds. For Buster Douglas, this was in the 10th. For Evander Holyfield, this was in the 11th. Lennox Lewis has a great gas tank and is able to weather the storm like we saw in the Shannon Briggs fight 
but also he could outbox for a long period of time like we saw against David Tua, who also is a very short, stocky, and powerful puncher. Now these guys are not comparable to Mike Tyson, sure, but I think he can still do the same game plan against Tyson and find success. And finally, we have the other Tyson, Tyson Fury. And this is the first guy who is bigger, taller than Lennox Lewis, and arguably as skilled as him. But I think the advantages are very slim for Tyson Fury. First of all, Fury is listed as 6'9", but pictures next to Wilder and Francis Ngannou show that he's probably closer to 6'7". The reach advantage is only about 1 inch, so I don't think that's going to be a huge difference maker. And in terms of skill, I think they're about even. The big advantage for Lennox Lewis is his power, especially his laser straight right hand. If Deontay Wilder, somebody who's significantly less skilled than Lennox Lewis, was able to drop Tyson Fury three times over their trilogy, I think Lennox Lewis definitely has enough power and skill to knock down or knock out Tyson Fury eventually. I think Lennox Lewis's unique combination of being very physically capable and above most other boxers while also being extremely skilled with high fight IQ makes him either too strong and too powerful or too skilled. And in a best of 10 would beat all other heavyweights. So what are your guys' thoughts? Do you think Lennox Lewis is the best ever? Is it Mike Tyson, Tyson Fury, Muhammad Ali, or somebody else? Leave it in the comments section. And as always, thank you for the support these last couple of videos. I hope to be uploading a little more frequently during this month. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Peace.